7 p.m. Eastern in just about 10 seconds. No, sorry, now. It's 7 p.m. Eastern. We've got poll closings in Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, Virginia, Georgia, and Indiana. In terms of what we can project at this hour, the crucial battleground state of Virginia. NBC News is projecting this race at this point as too close to call. Virginia, obviously, the most hotly watched state that is closing at this hour. In the great state of Indiana, NBC News can project that the winner is Mitt Romney. So obviously also there a closely watched Senate race that we'll be keeping an eye on in Indiana. In the great state of Kentucky, NBC News projects that Mitt Romney is also the winner, state that John McCain won by 16 points. The state did vote twice for Bill Clinton, but tonight, Kentucky goes for Mitt Romney. In Vermont, NBC News can project that the winner is President Obama. Bernie Sanders there is also in a Senate race in Vermont. We'll be checking in on that race in just a moment. In Georgia, right now, it is too early to call, according to NBC News projection. This does not mean that it is necessarily too close to call. It just means that we do not have enough information to characterize the race as being to the advantage of either candidate. Also in South Carolina, it is too early to call because of insufficient information on which to make a projection. South Carolina status is too early to call. At this point, in terms of the electoral vote, it's a teeny tiny total for both sides. Barack Obama with three electoral votes, Mitt Romney with 19 electoral votes. That map will fill in over the course of the night as we get closer to the magic number of 270. In terms of some of these important Senate races in these states that just closed, let's go to Alex Wagner for some of these Senate calls. Alex? Thanks, Rachel. Some updates on the upper chamber here. In terms of the balance of power, let us first take a look at what is happening in Virginia. In the Virginia race, sorry, let's start with Vermont. Bernie Sanders holds on to his seat, the independent. This is not a great surprise. Uh, Bernie Sanders, an independent who tends to caucus with the Democratic Party. On to Virginia, where the presidential race is too close to call. And not surprising, the Senate race is as well. This is going to be one where the down ticket, down ballot may reflect what happens at the top of the race, at the top of the ticket. Uh, Four percent of the vote in in Indiana. It too is too close to call at this hour. Romney there is a projected winner. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Down ballot. Let's look at the Senate overall. It remains unchanged. Democrats hold 30 seats, Republicans 37, and independents have one. Back to you, Rachel. Alex Wagner, thank you very much. Chris Matthews, uh, too close to call in the Senate. It is 7.30 on the East Coast, and polls are closing in West Virginia, in North Carolina, and in Ohio. If you are in line to vote in any of those places, you must be let in to vote. In the crucial swing state of Ohio, NBC is characterizing this race as too close to call. Again, Ohio, too close to call at this hour. In the state of North Carolina, which was won by President Obama in 2008, again, NBC is characterizing this race at this point as too close to call. And in the state of West Virginia, there is a projected winner, Mitt Romney, the projected winner uh, in the state of West Virginia. At this point, with the uh, coal, the polls that were closed in the 7 o'clock hour, not just closing right now, but that closed at 7 o'clock, we are still characterizing the Virginia presidential race as too close to call. In the state of Georgia, it is too early to call at this point. We do not yet have enough information out of Georgia to project an advantage for either candidate. Same goes for South Carolina. At this point, South Carolina still too early to call. When you add all this up in terms of the electoral map, President Barack Obama with three electoral votes, the state that has been called for him thus far is the state of Vermont. And Mitt Romney with West Virginia, Kentucky, and Indiana in his column, that puts him well ahead with a very small number of states. Alex Wagner is tracking Senate and House races. A couple of crucial Senate races we're looking at from the states that just had their polls closed. Alex, what do you got? Thanks, Rachel. We have a few updates to give you. In West Virginia, we have a projected winner. Joe Manchin, the incumbent, the Democrat, holds on to his seat. Not a huge surprise here, but we can say that Joe Manchin, the projected winner, is the projected winner at this hour. Let's take an overview of the upper chamber right now. At this hour, it remains unchanged. The Democrats with 31 seats. Independents have one and the Republicans have 37. Over to Ohio, the state we will be watching all evening. It is too close to call. Sherrod Brown, the incumbent, in a tight race with 35-year-old Ohio State Treasurer Josh Mandel. 
Again, too close to call in Ohio. Over to Virginia, much the same story with 2% of the votes in. Tim Kaine in a neck and neck race with George Allen. All that separates them at this hour is 11,911 votes. Over to Indiana, similar story with 10% of the vote in. Richard Murdoch in a very tight race with Joe Donnelly. What's interesting in Indiana is that libertarians are taking 6% of the vote in this race. You may recall that polls last week showed Murdoch, Richard Murdoch, losing to Joe Donnelly by 11 points. This has tightened up considerably. Given that, it will be interesting to see what the libertarian vote does to this race. And certainly how Mitt Romney does in that race may affect what happens down ballot. Back over to you, Rachel. House of Hero right we now. We do have a call in a state that we had not previously called. NBC News can project that in the state of South Carolina, uh, Mitt Romney is the winner, and that is nine electoral votes uh, for Mitt Romney. So at this point, that puts uh, Mr. Romney with Indiana, South Carolina, Kentucky, and West Virginia all in his column. Uh, at this point, the only state that has been called for President Obama is Vermont. We are still waiting on Ohio, North Carolina, uh, and Virginia. Those are all characterized as too close to call. Georgia's still too early to call at this hour. Tamara. It is 8 p.m. on the East Coast on election night, and that means we have had poll closings in all of these states that you see on your screen right now. Obviously, the main swing states that we are looking at in this batch of poll closings are Pennsylvania, Florida, and New Hampshire. I will give you all the calls that we can make right now. Starting in Pennsylvania, NBC News is characterizing the race in Pennsylvania as too early, but President Obama has a lead. That is the characterization by NBC News in Pennsylvania. In Florida, it is too close to call. Florida obviously critical every year with its 29 electoral votes. In the state of New Hampshire, it is also too close to call. New Hampshire was won by President Obama in 2008. It is a neighboring state to where Mitt Romney is from in Massachusetts. President's home state of Illinois, NBC News projects that President Obama will win Illinois. NBC News also projecting President Obama wins in Massachusetts. In the state of Tennessee, NBC News projects that Mitt Romney is the winner. In the state of Maryland, President Obama projected by NBC News to be the winner. In the state of Alabama, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In the state of Oklahoma, which gave John McCain his largest margin of victory anywhere in 2008, Mitt Romney is the winner in Oklahoma. In the state of Connecticut, NBC News projects that Barack Obama has won the state of Connecticut. In the state of Mississippi, NBC News projects that that winner is Mitt Romney. In the state of Maine, this is interesting, the state has been, proje the projected winner of the state of Maine is Barack Obama. There is no specific call at this point on the second congressional district in Maine. Maine and Nebraska are the only two states in the union that divide their electoral votes by congressional district. Three of the four electoral votes in Maine have been awarded essentially uh, to President Obama in the NBC projection, but there is not yet a projection on the second congressional district and it's one electoral vote in Maine. In the state of Rhode Island, NBC News can project that the winner is President Obama. In the state of Delaware, which is the home state, excuse me, in the state of, we've got Rhode Island there, next is Delaware. In the state of Delaware, which is the home state for Vice President Biden, the projected winner is President Obama. In the District of Columbia, which gave President Obama his largest margin of victory in 2008, NBC News projects President Obama as the winner. In the state of New Jersey, this is interesting. This is too early to call, but obviously New Jersey is voting under extenuated circumstances this week because of the devastating impact of Hurricane Sandy on this state. NBC, I have to tell you, may not call New Jersey specifically because of extended voting until Friday in New Jersey, but that is a special case. The state of Missouri is also being described at this point as too early to call. That does not reflect an advantage for either candidate. It just reflects that we do not have enough information to project an advantage in the state of Missouri. Recapping our earlier poll closings um, and what these uh, and, and whether or not we can update these projections, we still are characterizing the race in Ohio as too close to call. Also in the state of North Carolina, it is still too close to call. 
and also in the crucial swing state of Virginia. NBC is still characterizing this race as too close to call. That's your roundup for poll closings as of 8 o'clock. This is the electoral vote and what the electoral map looks like at this point. Uh, again, there have been no major surprises this fa thus far in terms of how these states look based on uh, when you compare it to the polling heading into tonight. But the biggest bellwethers, the biggest swing states tonight are still too close to call. Chris Matthews looking at this right. map. Pennsylvania, interesting characterization there. Yeah. Pennsylvania, too early, but Obama has a lead. Yeah, We're going to go for results and for uh, characterizations of these Senate races in a lot of these important states now to Alex Wagner. Alex? Thanks, Rachel. We do have some updates. In Maine, we have a projected winner. Angus King, the independent, taking the seat. He is the projected winner at this hour. Angus King, who of course is not a member of the Democrat or Democratic or Republican Party, but is a pro-choice candidate and supports the Affordable Care Act, which probably bodes well for Democrats in the Senate. Over in Massachusetts, it is too early to call. Not a great surprise here. Uh, Elizabeth Warren and Scott Brown in a nail biter. Over in Missouri, much the same story. Senator Claire McCaskill and Todd Akin. After after a massive hemorrhaging of Republican support following his legitimate rape comments, it's worth noting that Todd Akin got a late stage infusion of cash. Over in Connecticut, too early to call with Chris Murphy and Linda McMahon. Linda McMahon, who of course has spent nearly $100 million in her two bids for the Senate. In Pennsylvania, same story, too early to call, Bob Casey and Tom Smith. Over now to Florida where we have a projected winner. Bill Nelson, the Democrat and the incumbent, who is getting sort of a late stage run from his opponent, Connie Mack. He is the projected winner in the state of Florida. Over into Mississippi, Roger Wicker, the incumbent, the Republican, is the projected winner at this hour. And into Maryland, where, where Ben Cardin, again, the incumbent, the Democrat, is the projected winner. In Delaware, Thomas Carper, the incumbent, the Democrat, is the projected winner. Up to Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse, again, not a surprise, the Democrat, the incumbent, is the projected winner. Down over to Tennessee, where the projected winner is Bob Corker, again, an incumbent and a Republican holding on to his seat. And in New Jersey, as you mentioned, Rachel, this is going to be a tight one. We're in one we're going to be looking at for some time. It is too early to call. Bob Menendez is in, in a tight race. Uh, as you mentioned, there will be extended voting, and that may drag this race in further, further down into the week. Let us take a look at the Senate at this hour. The Democrats have 35 seats. The Republicans have 39. Independents have two. That's a gain of one seat for the Independents, with, of course, Angus King right there in the center possibly caucusing with the Democrats. We'll see. Back over to you. Alex, I have to interrupt you there for a moment, sir, just because we've just, reset, we've just received word that we can make a call in a state we had not previously been able to characterize. Polls have just closed uh, just moments ago in the great state of Arkansas. In Arkansas, uh, the projected winner there is Mitt Romney. Not exactly a great surprise, but we have to let you know about that. We can also make a call in an important and hotly contested Senate race in the state of Connecticut. NBC News projects that the winner is Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy beating Linda McMahon in the Connecticut Senate race. Um, that's that, that, I have to say, is a surprise. Actually, David Pluff, I'd love to hear your reaction to that. We've had a win for Florida Senator Bill Nelson uh, in that state, even as the presidential race is too close to call. And in Connecticut, which President Obama won, we It is 9 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have just had a giant batch of poll closings. All the states that you see on your, on your screen right now, both on the map and scrolling on the left side of your screen. In terms of projections of the race at this hour, we will start with some hotly contested ones. Michigan, NBC News can project that the winner in Michigan is President Obama. In the state of Wisconsin, it is too early to call in the state of Wisconsin, but President Obama is leading in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. In Colorado, it is too close to call at this hour. In Texas, NBC News can project that Mitt Romney is the winner. Texas, 38 electoral votes. In New York, President Obama is the projected winner, 29 electoral votes. In Louisiana, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In Kansas, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In New Mexico, the projected winner is President Obama. Ooh. 
in Nebraska. President, excuse me, Mitt Romney is projected as the winner of the overall state of Nebraska. But Nebraska is the other state besides Maine that awards its electoral votes based on congressional district. And so what this means is that four of the five electoral votes in Nebraska are being awarded to Mitt Romney. We are not making a characterization of the second congressional district in Nebraska. So only four of the five electoral votes are spoken for here in awarding this state uh, to Mitt Romney. He's the projected winner in Nebraska. Moving on to North Dakota. In North Dakota, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In South Dakota, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In the great state of Wyoming, no great suspense here, the projected winner is Mitt Romney. In Arizona, the projection from NBC News in Arizona is that it is too early to call, but Mitt Romney is in the lead in Arizona. Again, too early, but Mr. Romney leading. In Minnesota, the characterization of NBC News is that this is also too early to call, but in this case, President Obama is in the lead in Minnesota. Recapping some of our earlier poll closings where we have calls or projections. Pennsylvania, it is too early to call, but NBC News is describing President Obama as being in the lead in Pennsylvania. In the great state of Florida, it is too close to call. In the great state of Ohio, it is also too close to call. Also in North Carolina, it is too close to call. In neighboring Virginia, it is too close to call. In the state of New Hampshire, which neighbors Mitt Romney's home state of Massachusetts, it is too close to call. In the state of New Jersey, which has somewhat unusual circumstances because of the impact of Hurricane Sandy and the extension of voting there and the disruption of voting there, it is too early to call in New Jersey. But again, that should be seen as somewhat of a special case because of the difficult circumstances in that state. One more state that we can characterize as too early to call, that is the great state of Missouri. We also have one additional call for you today, which is of a different character uh, than the rest of the states. There you see the electoral vote as it adds up as we start to fill in these maps. Uh, fill in the map as each candidate is awarded these states, projected winner in each of these states by NBC News. We have one other call to make, which is an overall call in terms of the control of the House of Representatives. Not going to tell you an NBC projection on any specific House race at this point, but I am going to tell you that NBC News can project that overall control of the House of Representatives will be retained by the Republican Party. Again, that's an overall numerical projection in terms of who will be in control of the House. We will be looking at another term, if all stays the same on Republican leadership, of House Speaker John Boehner. Republican control in the House of Representatives. Looking at those results, obviously in terms of the presidential race, you guys, the big news here is that Michigan goes for President Obama. Wisconsin, too early to call, but with an Obama lead. I need to and interrupt you actually for a second. You just mentioned New Jersey. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll only go interrupt for it. you for a call, but we do actually have a call to make in the state of New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey has seen a sort of a special case tonight because of the difficulty with Hurricane Sandy. But NBC News is projecting that President Obama has won in New Jersey. We can also make a call also in New Jersey in terms of the Senate race in New Jersey. Uh, the Democrat in that race, the Democratic incumbent Senator Bob Menendez, uh, is the projected winner in his Senate race there. Again, we did not exactly know how this was going to work out in New Jersey in terms of whether we'd right. be able to talk about this state in line with other states tonight. But we now have an NBC News projection both for that Senate race uh, and for the president. Yeah, I think this is the Senate race uh, call in Pennsylvania. Oh. In the state of Pennsylvania, NBC can project right. that the winner is the incumbent Democratic Senator uh, Bob Casey. So Chuck, I should take that back. You didn't lie to us, but it turns out you misled us because all we know by nine o'clock is a bunch of Senate races. And while they are fascinating, we still know basically nothing about the presidential race at this hour. Is that right? Uh, except I think the fact that... Let me interrupt you here just for a moment. We have a big call to make in a big state. NBC News can now project that the winner in the state of Pennsylvania is President Obama. This had previously been described as Pennsylvania was too early to call, but it was leaning Obama or that President Obama had a lead there. But now NBC projects the winner in Pennsylvania uh, as President Obama. Um, we're looking at the dynamics between the presidential race and some of these Senate races. And in terms of what just closed in 9 p.m., uh, at 9 p.m., obviously the big swing states that just closed at 9 p.m. that we have an eye on. For Let's go to Alex Wagner for more on that. Thanks, Rachel. A fluid and exciting situation in the upper chamber. Let's start first in North Dakota. Heidi Heitkamp in a very tight race with Rick Berg. This, of course, is a seat that's open due to Kent Conrad's retirement. If the Republicans pick it up, it would be a plus for them. Um, it, it, Romney, of course, is the winner in the state. It'll be interesting to see if those dynamics down ballot reflect what happens on the top of the ticket. 
New Mexico is next. It is too early to call with 1% of the votes in. Martin Heinrich, 28% of the vote. Heather Wilson, 69% of the vote. On to Wisconsin. As you mentioned, a really interesting race there. Tommy Thompson trying to take advantage of the machine that Scott Walker built. Tammy Baldwin, if she wins, will be the first openly gay member of the U.S. Senate. On to Texas. Ted Cruz, Tea Party darling, goes to the upper chamber. Will be interesting to see how that dynamic affects the usually deliberative upper chamber. And in New York, not a big surprise here. Kirsten Gillibrand is the projected winner. She, of course, is a Democrat and the incumbent. Over in Michigan, Debbie Stabenow holds on to her seat. Not a huge surprise here. She is the incumbent. Incumbent. On to Minnesota, where we have Amy Klobuchar is the project. Oh, Amy Klobuchar is the projected winner. She again, also the Democrat and the incumbent. Over to Wyoming. John Barrasso, the incumbent, holds on to his seat. He is the projected winner. Arizona, one of my favorite races this season. This is a close one. Too close to call Jeff Flake, Richard Carmona. Jeff Flake trying to hold on to a seat that is open because of John Kyle's retirement. The Republicans have had this for 20 years nearly. If Richard Carmona gets it, it will because the, be because the Latino electorate has grown in size in that state. And over in Nebraska, too close to call Bob Carey. No. Deb Fisher, Bob Carey. Too, sorry, too early to call with just... 4% of the, of the uh, vote in. Uh, Alex, thank you. A lot you. going on there. A lot going on there, Rachel. Yes. The big story tonight, obviously, the presidency. Still too close to call in Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, New Hampshire, uh, and, uh, and Colorado. But in terms of the Senate races and the governor's races, those are important not just as standalone results tonight, but also in terms of what they indicate for the continuing national race. I want to run down some of what we know already about governors with you. In the state of North Carolina, Bev Perdue is the Democratic governor in North Carolina. She decided not to run for re-election, and this flips with Pat McCrory, NBC News projecting Pat McCrory, the Republican gubernatorial candidate in North Carolina, as the winner in North Carolina. That means this governorship flips to the Republican Party. In Vermont, the incumbent Democratic Governor Peter Shumlin is projected by NBC News to hold on to his seat there. In New Hampshire, NBC News projects that the winner is the Democratic candidate Maggie Hassan. That's a Democratic hold. John Lynch had been the previous Democratic Governor of New Hampshire. In Delaware, NBC News projects that the incumbent Democratic Governor of Delaware, Jack Markell, is holding on to his seat. In North Dakota, the incumbent Republican uh, governor of North Dakota is projected by NBC News to also hold on to his seat. Now, in Indiana, where Governor Mitch Daniels is outgoing, Right now, it is too early to call between Republican Mike Pence and the Democrat John Gregg. Again, Indiana, too early to call in that governor's race. In West Virginia, we are also looking at a race that is too early to call. The incumbent Democrat in West Virginia is Earl Ray Tomlin. Too early to call between him and his Republican challenger. Also too early to call in Missouri, the incumbent Democrat Jay Nixon. Uh, too early to call against his Republican challenger. We have a state call for you in the presidential race. In the state of Wisconsin, NBC News is projecting President Obama as the winner in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Tamron Hall has the latest from our exit polling. Tamron? Rachel, you hear the crowd. You just called Wisconsin and this crowd around me. I cannot ignore what we are hearing. It's interesting that you're telling us about Wisconsin now. I have a the call to make. Just one, I'm sorry, Lawrence. I'll go right to you. We have a call to make in a very important and hotly contested Senate race. In the state of Ohio, NBC projects that Sherrod Brown <laughs> has won re-election. He is the incumbent Democratic senator that's in that's Ohio. Uh, obviously, the Ohio Senate race right now is still, excuse me, the Ohio presidential race is still too close to call. But that Senate race in Ohio, more outside spending against Sherrod, Sherrod Brown than I think anybody else faced in the country. Uh, he has held on to his seat tonight. Lawrence Adol. Not surprising in Sherrod Brown's case since he knows his electorate and stays close to him. Small point, the Republicans have lost both of the home states of their candidates on the presidential ticket. You mean yes, all Massachusetts and Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Massachusetts yeah. and New
It is 941 on the East Coast. We are still looking ahead to some important poll closings at 10 o'clock. At the top of this hour, we'll have poll closings in Iowa and in Nevada, both important swing states, uh, as well as in Utah and Montana. Montana has a very interesting Senate race ahead. But in terms of the, the, the what we're w still watching, the key races that are still too close to call right now, sort of a stunning list. Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, New Hampshire, Colorado, all described as too close to call by NBC News at this point. Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania have all gone to President Obama. Uh, Missouri is described as too early to call at this point. Uh, in Arizona, too early to call with Romney in the lead. Minnesota, too early to call with Obama in the lead. I do have a call for you right now on a Senate race. Probably the most closely watched Senate race in the country, in Massachusetts. NBC News projects that Elizabeth Warren has won Scott Brown's Senate seat. Uh, Scott Brown won that seat after the death of Ted Kennedy. Uh, he was obviously operating in a very, very blue state, but he was a very popular guy. Elizabeth Warren has defeated Scott Brown, and that is a Democratic takeover in the Senate um, in Massachusetts. Interesting side note on this is that the person who is a senior advisor to the Scott Brown campaign Campaign. Chris, let me interrupt you, you just, just for a moment here. I have a call to make on a Senate race. The Indiana Senate race. NBC News can project that Joe Donnelly, the Democratic candidate, has defeated Richard Murdoch. The interesting backstory here, of course, is a microcosm of the dynamics in the Republican Party that have been so fascinating over the past couple of years. The veteran Senator Richard Lugar in Indiana was defeated by a Tea Party challenger in the Republican primary. Dick Lugar lost his seat not to a Democrat but to another Republican, Richard Richard Murdoch. Richard Murdoch put the seat. Democrats always felt more in play, uh, even before he made his, I think, rather unfortunate comments um, about rape and pregnancy and what God's intentions were around rape and pregnancy. Uh, but Joe Donnelly, the Democratic candidate, uh, has won that Senate seat in Indiana. That is a big, big Democratic pickup uh, in the state of Indiana. I want to go back to Chris Jansen. Uh, Chris, we still got you. We will go to Chris Hayes in just a moment, but we have another state to call in the presidential race. NBC News can project that in the state of New Hampshire, the winner is President Obama. In the state of New Hampshire, President Obama again is the winner. NBC News projection uh, coming in now after uh, New Hampshire polls closed at 8 p.m. Chris, let me just, Chris Matthews, let me just get your reaction to that. It's, it's astounding. That's a state that was going to be right on the nail. It is 10 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have had poll closings just right now in Iowa, Montana, Nevada, and Utah. In terms of NBC News characterizations of these states in Iowa in the presidential race, NBC News is characterizing this race as too early to call, but President Obama is in the lead in Iowa. In the state of Nevada, it is also being described as too early to call, but again, President Obama in the lead in Nevada. In the state of Utah, Mitt Romney is the projected winner in the state of Utah. NBC News projecting Mr. Romney in Utah. NBC News also projecting Mr. Romney as the winner in the great state of Montana. In terms of other states that we are still waiting for a call on, states that we can give you an indefinite characterization at this point, in Florida, it is too close to call. In all important, Ohio, it is too close to call. In North Carolina, it is too close to call. Also in the great state of Virginia, it is still too close to call at this hour. In Colorado, it is also too close to call. Now interestingly, in the state of Arizona, it is too early to call, but NBC News is saying that Mitt Romney is in the lead in Arizona. In Minnesota, it is also too early to call, but President Obama is in the lead in Minnesota. In the state of Missouri, it is too early to call. And again, remember, too early is a different type of call than too close. There's no advantage projected there. It's just that there's not enough information to make a characterization of the race yet in Missouri other than the fact that it is too early. This is the overall map right now in terms of uh, the electoral map. As you see, it's an exact electoral vote tie right now, 162 to 162. In terms of the states that just closed their polls, we do have two interesting Senate races. In Montana, it's the incumbent Democrat John Tester, who is defending his seat against Republican Congressman Denny Reberg. 
This race is characterized by NBC News right now as too close to call. Also in the state of Nevada, it is not just a presidential battleground, it is a Senate battleground. Dean Heller got that seat after John Ensign left the Senate under extenuating circumstances. Dean Heller uh, and Shelley Berkeley, that race is too close to call in the Senate. Uh, in Utah, Orrin Hatch, the senior senator from Utah, he is the projected winner. He has held on to his seat in Utah. That's what we've got right now in terms of races at this hour. Obviously, uh, we're still keeping an eye on all those states that are too close. Floor point, we have a call to make in another hotly contested Senate race. In the state of Missouri, NBC News wow. projects that Claire McCaskill, the Democratic incumbent senator from Missouri, has held onto her seat against Republican challenger Todd Akin. This has been a fascinating race from the very beginning. It was an amazing thing that Claire McCaskill won this seat in 2006. She is a good campaigner, but it was, and 2006 was a good year for Democrats. But that was still an amazing and very, very close victory that she won in 06 at the same time that John Tester won his seat in Montana. Claire McCaskill wanted Todd Akin among all of the Republicans in the primary to run against her for that seat. She wanted Todd Akin so badly, she ran ads for Todd Akin with her own campaign money in the primary. She we got the candidate he wanted. She won I actually have to go to a call right now in a race that we were not previously able to characterize. In the presidential race in Arizona, we had previously described this as too early to call, but with Mitt Romney in the lead, we can now say that Mitt Romney is the projected winner in the state of Arizona. Um, on that Senate race, though, in Massachusetts, I will say that if the campaigns are counting on basic, decent human communication between them in terms of coordinating who goes first and which speech happens, they had the worst communication. The only time I'd interrupt you, but I we know. have a call in Make a call. state that we have not previously been able to characterize. In Minnesota, NBC News projects that the winner in Minnesota is President Obama. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a trend. Uh, this had previously been described as too early, but with Obama leading, it has now been called for President Obama. You were on Hillsborough County, Florida there before I ripped you away from that that's, discussion. That's fine. Go ahead. Well, I just want to show you something. I just want to show you about sort of raw votes and a call in the Missouri presidential race. We have not previously been able to characterize this race, but in Missouri, NBC News projects that the winner will be Mitt Romney. Looking at that um, Todd Akin concession speech, um, Chuck, uh, Chris, you were talking about how he has to give up his House seat in order to run for that right. Senate seat. You can hold on to your House seat or your Senate seat and run for Vice yeah. President or President, but he's now not only not going to be in the Senate, he's not going to be in the House. You know, the I'm going to interrupt Elizabeth Warren here because we have another call in another Senate race. Virginia's Senate race had been too close to call. NBC News now projects that Tim Kaine, the Democrat, has beaten George Allen in the Senate race in Virginia. Which is, again, this was not a sure bet. Virginia at the presidential level is still too close to call. But in the Senate race, uh, Tim Kaine has defeated George Allen. It is 11 o'clock on the East Coast. We've got poll closings in California, Hawaii, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. In terms of the way that we can characterize these races, in California, which is the largest electoral vote prize of all, NBC News projects that President Obama is the winner in California. In the state of Washington, NBC News also projects that President Obama is the winner in the state of Washington. In Hawaii, President Obama's original home state, NBC News projects that President Obama has won in Hawaii. In Idaho, NBC News projects that Mitt Romney has won in the state of Idaho, one of the most conservative states in the nation. And in Oregon, this is interesting, in Oregon the ruling is from NBC News at this hour, too early to call President Obama in the lead in Oregon. In terms of understanding what we are waiting on right now, oh, uh, excuse me, Iowa, or as I like to think of it, the Iowa part of Ohio, Iowa is still too early to call with President Obama in the lead. In Nevada, it is also too early to call with President Obama described as being in the lead. In Florida, it is too close to call. In Ohio, it is also too close to call. In North Carolina, too close to call. In Virginia, it is too close to call. And in Colorado, 
it is too close to call. That is where things stand at this hour. But again, capping the top of the hour results from polls that just closed, California, Washington, and Hawaii all going for President Obama. Mr. Romney winning in Idaho. Oregon characterized as too early to call with President Obama in the lead. Steve Schmidt, we've been talking a lot about how much we can't talk to the Romney campaign at this point. We have an apparent winner uh, in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, NBC News is projecting Mitt Romney as the apparent winner in this case. Uh, that means that not everything is in, but NBC is comfortable enough with what is in to describe him as the apparent winner in this race. Uh, North Carolina obviously was uh, would be a huge blow to Mitt Romney if he did not win it. Uh, winning it doesn't get him all the way there, but it gets him further along than he was. I'm sorry to have to interrupt you there. Steve. In, in uh, 1988, George Herbert Walker Bush won the state of California. Uh, Ronald Reagan, of course, the former governor of California. California was a state that voted Republican. 1994, Proposition 187. We're going to interrupt Claire McCaskill's actually very good speech right now to make a very important call. NBC News projects that the winner in the state of Iowa is President Obama. Six electoral votes and a, 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 a state that was very hard fought this year. Uh, again, NBC News projecting the winner in Iowa right now as President Obama. Let's go back to Claire McCaskill. That makes me prouder. Which is that the state of Iowa was just called for President Obama. Um, nobody is to 270. Anything could yet happen. Uh, but we also have another call to make right now. In the, or, in the Oregon presidential race, NBC News is projecting that President Obama uh, has also won in Oregon. So in terms of the 11 o'clock poll closings, President Obama won California and Washington and Hawaii and Oregon. Uh, Mitt Romney won Idaho. Uh, in terms of the, the, the bigger news here about Iowa, the reaction that you're seeing here in Chicago um, is to the Iowa news and to the Oregon news. And we have just learned that in the state of Ohio, NBC News has projected that President Obama has won the state of Ohio. President Obama has been reelected for a second term. He did it. Uh, with this call in Ohio, it is uh, a done deal. President Barack Obama wins a second term uh, as 44th president of the United States. Uh, let the record show that it is 12 minutes past 11 p.m. on the East Coast. Ohio put him over the top. Chris Matthews. He didn't need the South. It's so interesting. He may well win all three of those states, but he didn't need them. This is a very, and I thought, I said this in the beginning of the night. The, the Democrats have retained control of the Senate. Because the vice president functions as the tie-breaking vote in the Senate, even with the outstanding races still not yet called in the Senate, this means with Joe Biden as vice president, the Senate retains, uh, the Senate is retained in Democratic control. Again, from earlier tonight, we know that the House will be retained in Republican control. That tells you something. Well, the networks at this point have called the state of Ohio, which of course would be decisive. So all of the networks have called it. Um, the Romney campaign um, is saying that they don't accept those calls, but uh, we will see. If it's relevant to you, the Secretary of State in Ohio is the top elections official in that state. Uh, it's John Husted. Uh, he's a former Republican leader in the legislature there, and he's been at the fight at the middle of a number of very, very partisan and hard-fought battles. Oh. Senate calls that I want to make sure that I get in. First, in Arizona. In Arizona, the race is between Richard Carmona, the Democratic former Surgeon General, and Jeff Flake, Republican Congressman. NBC now projects that Jeff Flake, the Republican candidate for Senate in Arizona, has defeated Richard Carmona. We've also got another Senate call in New Mexico. In New Mexico, this is the former Democratic Senator Jeff Bingaman's seat. It will be held by Martin Heinrich. Martin Heinrich, the Democrat, defeating Heather Wilson uh, in New Mexico. So one call in Arizona for the Republican Senate candidate, one call in New Mexico for the Democratic Senate candidate. What this means with that addition of Martin Heinrich to the Democrats' tally in the Senate is that even without President, uh, excuse me, Vice President Biden, uh, the Democrats retain control of the United States Senate as the House goes to the Republican yeah, Party. I
Welcome back to MSNBC's live coverage of election night 2012. NBC News has projected that President Barack Obama has won re-election. That happened when the state of Ohio was called, thus putting President Obama over the top. I then took one bathroom break the whole night, whereupon Colorado was called. I came back from the bathroom and said that Colorado was still too close to call. Nobody told me while I was in the bathroom, Colorado went for President Obama. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. You really took my back. Took, took, took. A lot of the rest of us were in the bathroom, too. All right. Mr. Matthews and Mr. Schmidt. We were sneaking Colorado no. past you. By the way, it was on this very large screen here, by the way. It wasn't it's, being hidden. It, no label. It's square. I apologize. I made an error when I still describe Colorado as too close to call. Colorado NBC News projects uh, goes for President Obama. There are a few other things that we want to let you know about uh, that are going on tonight that we have not yet discussed, but a lot of people have been paying attention to them, even if they are not in the state where they're happening, because these are some of the most interesting characters in the House of Representatives. In Illinois, the Republican incumbent is Joe Walsh. He is a guy who's gotten in trouble uh, for saying some sort of outrageous statements and for screaming at his uh, constituents on camera. Uh, in redistricting, he was up against, uh, in an even more difficult district than he was in before, and up against a very tough opponent in the Democrat, Tam Tammy Duckworth. Tammy Duckworth has beaten Joe Walsh uh, tonight in a eighth district in Illinois. In Florida, Alan Grayson, you guys know Alan Grayson, has defeated Todd Long. Alan Grayson coming back to Congress in Florida. Also in Florida, the scandal-ridden Republican Congressman David Rivera has been defeated. David Rivera will be leaving Congress. He's been replaced by the Democrat he was up against named Joe Garcia. Joe Garcia upsetting or unseating David Rivera there. In Iowa, Steve King, one of the most high-profile far-right members of Congress, has won re-election. Uh, Christy Vilsack was his Democratic opponent. Christy Vilsack, the wife of uh, Tom Vilsack, the Secretary of Agriculture and the former governor of Iowa. In Minnesota, speaking of high profile, Michelle Bachman is 50-50 with her Democratic opponent, oh. Jim Graves. This is the 6th district in Minnesota. Uh, Michelle Bachman is obviously nationally famous even before she ran for president this year. Um, a very high profile member of Congress and that race could not be tighter. There's obviously no characterization there. In District 18 in Florida, this is also a race in which there is no characterization. 50-50 between Alan West, the very outspoken, controversial Republican congressman in Florida, District 18, and his Democratic opponent, Patrick Murphy. Look at how tight that is. Uh, not just 50-50, but in terms of that raw vote. So we're going to be keeping an eye on these House races. So a hotly contested Senate race in the state of Wisconsin. NBC News can project that Tammy Baldwin, the Democratic candidate for Senate in Wisconsin, has beaten her <coughs> Republican opponent, former Governor Tommy Thompson. This was a very hard-fought race, a very expensive race, and ultimately a historic race as Tammy Baldwin becomes the first openly gay woman in the United States Senate. Um, this is a big deal. Wisconsin goes to the president um, at the presidential level, and it goes Democratic at the Senate level. Right now, we are seconds away uh, from Mitt Romney and what we are told will be his concession remarks. Welcome back to MSNBC's live coverage of election night 2012. A little ray of sunshine tonight for the Republican presidential and vice presidential ticket. Paul Ryan did not have to resign his U.S. House seat in order to run for vice president. And Paul Ryan has been reelected to the House in Wisconsin District 1, defeating his Democratic opponent 56 to 42. That's with 82 percent of the vote reporting. But this race is called. Paul Ryan will be returning to the House of Representatives, uh, presumably as the House House Republican budget chairman. Um, we are waiting for which I will interrupt you, which is a call. Good. In the state of Virginia, NBC News projects wow. that the winner is President Obama. Wow. Also in the state of Alaska, NBC News will project that the winner is oh. Mitt Romney. Uh, Alaska, Mitt Romney, but in Virginia, the winner, uh, President Obama. That was too close to call for the entire night. Uh, but Virginia now also going to the president. Uh, we still have outstanding races in Nevada and Florida. Those races have not been called in terms of the presidency. I'm stunned by that Virginia result. I mean, I knew that we knew it was close, but and I knew that Chuck told us it was sort of coming. Florida is still possible. Yeah. This has ended up being a, this is, this ended table. up, you know, you know who won the election tonight? Nate Silver. 
Oh. <laughs> With all those people telling him, oh, it's crazy that you're saying it's going to be not, it's not going to be this close. It's not going to be close. How crazy? How everybody can see how close it's going to be. It ended up not being close. Did you see Jim Cramer's predictions? Through the roof. He's, he may well beat those standards tonight. Yeah, this those is incredible numbers. stuff. All right, one of the other things that's happened tonight is that it has actually been a very, very big night uh, for women. Uh, tonight. Obviously, President Obama winning a second term. We have heard a concession speech, a short, to the point, and gracious concession speech tonight from Mitt Romney. Uh, we've also heard a, a long and expansive victory speech from President Obama, but there are still races that are being decided right now. I want to take you right now to the Senate in terms of what's going on in the Senate. We've got three races in the Senate that are still too close to call. The first one in Nevada, the Democrat Shelley Berkeley, uh, the Republican Dean Heller there, the Nevada race is too close to call. Um, also in Montana, the race is too close to call between incumbent Democrat John Tester and Republican Congressman Denny Reberg. The third Senate race that is too close to call is in North Dakota with 91% of the vote in. Look at the difference in the vote total there. Heidi Heitkamp, the Democrat there. Rick Berg, the Republican. So Nevada, Montana, and North Dakota, too close to call. In terms of the Senate Democratic pickups, in Connecticut, in Indiana, and in Massachusetts, we've got pickups. Connecticut, it is Chris Murphy. In Indiana, it's Joe Donnelly. In Massachusetts, it's Elizabeth Warren. There is a pickup in the Senate for independents. In Maine, that had been a Republican seat, uh, but when independent and into the independent Angus King is going to be picking up that seat in Maine that had previously been held by Olympia Snow. Uh, in terms of the Republican pickups, uh, there was one Republican Senate pickup tonight. The Nebraska seat that previously had been held by Ben Nelson uh, will now go to Deb Fisher, who is the Republican candidate in that Nebraska Senate seat, defeating Democrat uh, Bob Kerry. Uh, just in terms of some of these notable races, um, the, a lot of the Senate races were very close and very interesting tonight. Obviously, the Republicans got that one pickup. Democrats got three pickups. We've still got three too close to call. But when you look at the races that have been decided, these are just some big headline results. Uh, in Wisconsin, we've got Tommy Thompson, four-term governor of Wisconsin, being defeated by Tammy Baldwin. This is the first time an openly gay woman has been elected uh, to the United States Senate. It's the first time that any incumbent, non-incumbent openly gay person has been elected to the U.S. Senate. Um, in New Mexico, Martin Heinrich, the Democrat, uh, has won that seat there. Uh, that was a very hard-fought seat there in New Mexico. In Virginia, the projected winner is the Democratic former governor of Virginia, Tim Kaine. In Missouri, it would have been difficult for Claire McCaskill to hold on to the seat in any circumstances other than these ones that she won in tonight, beating Todd Aiken tonight to hold on to her seat in Missouri. In Ohio, Sherry Brown, facing a tide of outside money, defeats Josh Mandel and holds on to his Senate seat in Ohio. In Pennsylvania, Bob Casey also defeating a self-funded, very well-off challenger who fought him very hard, Tom Smith, in Pennsylvania. In Florida, Democratic incumbent Senator Bill Nelson holds on to his seat, a harsh challenge against from Connie Mack. And in Hawaii, the first time we have discussed this race tonight, the Senate seat. This was an, a sort of an unexpectedly tough race for a very blue state. Maisie Hirono, the Democrat, facing off against Linda Lingle, uh, the Republican there. Uh, the Senate at this hour, the overall Dem pickup is two. Uh, the Democrats with 51 seats, the Republicans with 44 seats. A lot of people were projecting that the Democrats would be able to hold on to the Senate. Not very many people were projecting that they would be increasing their margin. Here's some interesting facts about New Hampshire. Something very interesting has happened in the state of New Hampshire tonight. This is the governor's race. Maggie Hassan, the Democrat, defeating, defeating Ovid LaMontagne. But also in New Hampshire, in terms of the other races in that state, in District 1, there's two congressional districts in New Hampshire. Carol Shea Porter defeats Frank Ginta in 1st Congressional District. So that means we've got Maggie Hassan, the Democrat. We've also got Carol Shea Porter, the Democrat. In the other congressional district in New Hampshire, District 2, look at this. We've got Ann Custer, the Democrat, defeating Charlie Bass, the Republican. Are you noticing a pattern here that is more than just partisan? In terms of the U.S. Senators from New Hampshire, neither of these two serving U.S. Senators from New Hampshire was up for re-election tonight, so they both continue to serve. Gene Shaheen, the Democrat, and Kelly Ayotte, the Republican. What that means is that New Hampshire, in terms of its federal office holders, 
and it's statewide office holders. We've got remember what you're about to say next because I have to interrupt you because Please. we have a call uh, in a state which we could previously not characterize. NBC News projects that in Nevada, President Obama is the winner, adding to his electoral tally, uh, pushing him, I believe, up over 300 electoral votes at this point. This is starting to look like uh, not just a clear night, but a almost shockingly decisive night in terms of the presidential results. Uh, we are still waiting uh, to hear, of course, about Florida. Uh, Chris Hayes, back to you in terms of uh, what this means for the Senate. We, well, look, I mean, there's there's still three outstanding races. That our next donut run as a group to tell you what remains to be decided tonight. Right now, we've got three Senate races that do not yet have a call. In Nevada, Shelley Berkeley versus Dean Heller. In that race, we do not have a call. That race is too close to call in Nevada, even as Nevada at the presidential level goes for President Obama. In North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp versus Rick Berg. Again, too close to call, with 92% of the vote in, still too close to call there. In Montana, incumbent Democrat John Tester versus Denny Reberg, 62% in. That race is too close to call. In the Montana governor's race, we also do not have a call at this point. Montana governor's race at this point is Steve Bullock, the attorney general, Democratic attorney general versus Republican challenger Rick Hill. Uh, at this point, with 62% in, too close to call. The other governor's race at this point, which is too close to call, is in Washington state. Former Democratic congressman Jay Inslee uh, versus Rob McKenna. 55% of the vote in there. Governor in Washington state, too close to call. We do have an update on one high-profile house race. District 18 in Florida. Look at that. Look at that. This is the Allen West race. 50-50. You can see how narrow the vote margin is between Patrick Murphy, the Democratic challenger, and Alan West. Alan West, a nationally famous Republican and a bombastic one, his redistricting challenge actually, redistricting actually made things worse for Alan West in this race than they would have otherwise been. Uh, but that'll be interesting to watch that come in. There's still a few of these. Well, it's 541 in the morning here on the East Coast, and we have a call that's just come in to us at NBC in Minnesota's 6th District. Michelle Bachman, former presidential candidate, has been reelected. The Republican incumbent reelected there in the state of Minnesota by a very close margin. They were obviously counting these votes deep into the night, but now NBC has called Michelle Bachman winning re-election in her district. Well, uh, President Obama has won a second term in the... Okay, so we're able to go ahead to say that John Tester is going to stay uh, in place uh, in his seat there in, in Montana, the projected winner there, the incumbent, as we said. Uh, overnight, we were, we were debating that one and what was taking place in North Dakota as well. They were just so tight. Some breaking news for you. NBC News reports that Heidi Heitkamp is now the apparent winner in North Dakota. A lot of you have been interested in this big race, so there you have it. Another female member of the Senate. Big news there. We'll keep you up to date on the latest developments, but there you have it. NBC News reports that Heidi Heitkamp is the apparent winner in that hot race in North Dakota. Up next, though, I'll talk to Democratic strategist Congressman. Uh, I'll talk with Congressman, excuse me, from...